Aftermarket exhaust systems are among the most common upgrades made to vehicles. But what about exhaust headers? Stock exhaust manifolds are restrictive, but a set of mandrel bent aftermarket headers will allow the exhaust gas to move freely from the engine, reducing power robbing back pressure in the process. And a good set of headers will actually build up enough exhaust flow velocity to create energy pulses that pull or scavenge spent gases from the engine. That's the advantage of aftermarket headers. The question is, how do you choose the right headers for your vehicle? Dave here from Summit Racing, and in this video, we'll cover the top five considerations when choosing aftermarket headers. Before we get into our top five list, it's important to understand the anatomy of exhaust headers. There are three sections of an exhaust header, the flange, the primaries, and collector. All come into play at some point during the buying decision, particularly during our first consideration, vehicle and engine combination. First and foremost, your headers have to fit your vehicle, your specific vehicle. There is no one size fits all solution when it comes to headers. You'll notice on the Summit Racing website, headers are listed for specific combinations of engines and vehicles. Just because a set of headers fit a similar vehicle with the same engine, doesn't mean it'll fit your car. You'll also notice special fitment notes for many headers. Pay close attention to these notes. Here's where the header anatomy comes into play. The header flange must match the cylinder head bolt pattern and accommodate the exhaust port size, shape, and location. The primary tubes have to snake around things like your vehicle's frame, chassis and suspension parts, mounts and brackets, linkages, and more. And the collectors have to end up in a place where the rest of the exhaust system can be connected. With all that in mind, you need to factor in things like vehicle year, make and model, engine type and size, four wheel drive versus rear wheel drive versus all wheel drive, automatic versus manual transmission, and floor shifter versus column shifter. And even with the right set of headers, there could still be some interference issues. Some headers may require the use of shorty spark plugs or new alternator or air conditioning brackets. Factor number two when choosing headers, configuration. Headers come in multiple configurations and dimensions, and these play a crucial role in the actual performance of your vehicle. We'll keep our focus on designs mostly for street applications, and we'll start with full-length headers. Full-length headers utilize primary tubes that are longer than the primaries on your stock exhaust manifold. In most cases, these four primary tubes empty into one collector pipe and form a four-into-one design. Full-length headers help produce more overall power with good power in the low and mid RPM ranges right where most street-driven vehicles can use it the most. Shorty headers consist of four short primaries that dump into one short collector pipe. The compact dimensions make shorty headers a perfect choice for extremely crowded engine compartments or lowered vehicles where clearance is a concern. Shorty headers also typically work with the remaining stock exhaust components without modification, so installation is often a quick, clean process. Although shorty headers don't always produce as much low and mid-range power as full-length headers, they do provide significant power gains over stock manifolds and have the potential to produce higher RPM power gains. You can maximize the performance of your shorty headers by opting for equal-length primaries. Equal-length primaries will scavenge exhaust gases equally from all eight cylinders, keeping the torque curve consistent from each cylinder. The result is a broader torque curve in the low and mid-RPM range. Mid-length headers offer some of the benefits of full-length headers and shorty headers. They provide longer primaries in the stock manifold to help produce more of that coveted low and mid-range torque and power. However, the primaries are not as long as full-length headers, so there's increased clearance for lowered vehicles. We've mentioned a typical 4-to-1 collector setup a couple times, but what about tri-y headers? Tri-Y headers merge the four primaries into two slightly larger secondary pipes before merging into one collector. These secondary pipes allow the exhaust gases to maintain a higher velocity for a longer period of time as they gradually merge into the collector. This enhanced exhaust flow typically results in a broader torque curve than four to one headers. If you need headers for towing or engines that run mostly under 8,000 RPM, Tri-Y headers could be a good option. Other types of headers available include block huggers, which incorporate primary tubes that match the V-angle of the engine block for maximum frame rail clearance. These are often used in street rods. You can also find headers prefabricated for dragsters, circle track, and truck tractor pulls, as well as zoomies, side pipes, and fender well kits. Another important consideration, 
primary diameter. There are many factors that go into choosing the right pipe diameter. This goes back to engine size, horsepower, intended use of the vehicle, and more. But one common mistake that many hot rodders make is to assume that bigger is better. Although smaller diameter primaries will flow less volume than bigger primaries, a smaller diameter pipe actually creates faster exhaust flow velocity with just enough resistance to foster good low and mid-range torque. For that reason, most header manufacturers recommend modest pipe diameters for street applications. One and a half inch to one and five eighths inch diameter primaries for small block engines, for example. So what about header materials? That's number four on our list. Most aftermarket headers are made from steel or stainless steel. The advantage of choosing a standard steel header is simple, cost. Mild steel headers typically cost much less than varying types of stainless steel, but don't offer the durability of stainless steel. Stainless steel headers, on the other hand, last longer than mild steel headers in extreme conditions. They are better able to stand up to extreme heat and will not rust. The superior thermal characteristics and rust-free surface of stainless steel allows them to maintain smooth, restriction-free exhaust flow throughout their lifespan. Of course, there are different grades of materials. Check out the SummitRacing.com Help Center for a helpful chart. The last point on our list of top five considerations when choosing a header is actually a question. Coating or no coating? The most common type of header coating is ceramic coating, which provides a thermal barrier. This added thermal barrier keeps heat inside the primaries and helps keep ambient temperatures low in the engine compartment. That means cooler, denser intake charges and increased horsepower. In addition, ceramic coated headers maintain their finish even in extreme conditions. Headers are also available with natural or painted finishes. These finishes are a more affordable alternative to coated headers, but don't provide the performance or durability benefits. There you have it, five key factors in choosing the right headers for your application. Thanks for watching, and be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to always catch our latest videos.